going to get all this stuff I have to do. But, yeah, everyone appreciated it. No, that's does, uh, he's very close. And he writes it on this. He's been writing articles for him on breaking the basement. His presentation is on the Yeah, it's a It covers the much of the business. It's a real round. Frank Hanks, my friend, 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 and uh, the first thing on the agenda is the icebreaker. So what I want you to do, stand up, say your name, what chapter you're from, and what bird you would be if you could be a bird and walk. <laughs> and, and, I forgot, no one can say the same bird. You have to have a different bird. Oh, okay. uh. We're all writers. We should be creative enough. So I will start. <laughs> I'm Louise Harris. And I am the chairwoman of the programs committee, but I also represent Howard County chapter because that's the closest one to my house, and that's the only one I'll ever go to because I don't like to drive very far. Uh, the bird I would want to be is a seagull because every time I look at a seagull flying over the ocean, I always think it's freedom, and I think the ocean is free. So, so who I'm next? next? Okay, so who steals my bird? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amy Kaplan, uh, Howard County chapter secretary, and. Goldfinch, because they're bright and cheery, and they remind me of some bad. <laughs> I'm Janet Ruck, and I'm a Howard County treasurer, and I would like to be a parrot, because they live in the tropics, and they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm uh, Glenn, I'm uh, president of the Howard County chapter, and if I had to be a bird, <laughs> I guess I'd be uh, the strangest bird of paradise that they showed on on PBS. Uh, something that that uh, looks looks like something from outer space. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolee Nori. I am vice president, acting treasurer, and secretary for Montgomery County. Um, if I could be any bird, I think I'd be a hummingbird because they don't have to eat worms; they eat nectar. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Harrell from the Annapolis chapter, and I guess I'll go with the cardinal just because it's my favorite bird. Paul. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Paul Gassie, president of MWA and former president of Baltimore chapter. I also edit the newsletter, and I'd be a penguin because they're round and they waddle and, and they don't fly. And they don't fly. <laughs> they make people laugh about trying. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eileen McIntyre, and I'm secretary of MWA. And I think I would like to be a black falcon because it reeks of mystery and romance and travel and all kinds of interesting stuff. <laughs> I'm Alex Moore. I'm the president of the Montgomery County chapter. And it's really a toss-up, um, but I guess I would pick eagle because in the sort of uh, shamanistic lore, eagle has a connection both to earth and heaven, and that resonates with me in the spiritual writing and teaching that I do. I'm Edna Triano. I'm from the as yet unborn Charles County chapter. My favorite bird is the Carolina wren, but uh -uh, I'm going to be a scarlet macaw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to ask all of you to put down your names, your emails, and your phone numbers for when I misread your emails so that I can contact people as we get the chapter together. Thank you. John? John Dantico, and she stole my bird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and John Dantico, Long Range Planning uh, for MWA, and I'm closest to Howard County chapter, but I haven't been to a chapter meeting in a while, but I will be. And um, she stole my bird. <laughs> and uh, I, I guess if I if I had to pick another one, another bird. I had to pick two birds. I, I guess I would be a peregrine falcon because that's about the closest nice. thing to an eagle I can get. And peregrine falcons are tremendous hunters. Um, they seemingly to me are unafraid, and um, you know they go for it. I, I mean. Uh, the, you know, there's stories of them diving at 120, 200 miles an hour, whatever it is, to, to catch prey, and I think that's that's admirable. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to point out that oh, she stole my bird. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to point out that three birds here are going to eat all the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch our back.
Correct. Right. <laughs> well, a seagull's a scavenger. They'll eat anything. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Regina Stokers. I'm from Boston. Um, I'm Jim Lewis. I'm president founder of uh, the Carroll County chapter, and being the last of this bird, all the good birds are gone, so <laughs> I will be a parakeet because I don't feel like doing my own hunting and I want to live in where it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're not the last, there's two more. <laughs> I'm Steve Berberick, and the bird I would not like to be is Blue Heron because they steal my koi fish. <laughs> and they are always alone, and that leads me to my favorite bird is the swallow because I just am amazed at how they uh, form hundreds together, move around together as teams. I love team sports. I love feeling that, that sense of being part of a, a team moving in one direction. I hate individual sports, so the swallow is my favorite. Steve, what do you do for the MWA? Pardon me? What do you do for the MWA? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget <laughs> that we're supposed to say that. Yes. Communications chair. <laughs> Thank you. There's irony there, and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> David Joyner, I do. Uh, I'm, I help out with publicity for the MWA, and also on the chapter level, I do publicity for the Annapolis chapter. That's a great idea. And I guess uh, my uh, one of my favorite uh, birds is the, is not a bird; it's a cuckoo clock. But I guess that's out because it's not actually a bird. <laughs> I think that counts. But does that count? Yeah, okay, I, I want to be a cuckoo clock. clock. Oh, yeah. Remember, we have a psychotherapist here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I'm going to repeat my answer. <laughs> <laughs>
also just really wanted to take a couple minutes and talk about some of the things that uh, you, you may not know that we've been busy doing behind the scenes. I know the chapters don't get to hear a lot about the board outside of, of our uh, board meeting or board board list discussions and any kind of pronouncements we make, but the board's been really busy doing laying a lot of groundwork to really help make MWA a lot more viable as a, as a professional organization. And I don't know how widely appreciated it is, but, but there's, been a lot of, there's been a lot of work uh, that I think is going to benefit the chapters in the long run. We, are, we have just hired what I believe is our first ever, MWA's first ever paid staff. We have a bookkeeper. She's going to be working for us uh, for about five, six, five hours a week. Uh, and maybe more if we need it. Uh, this is, hmm? Five hours a month. What did I say? A week again. Oh yeah, okay. See, I'm really optimistic. I, one day I'd like to work her up to that level. No, I, my, my goal is to have an army of paid staff. I, I want us to have sleek offices with chrome and glass, but you know, one step at a time. She's going to be uh, helping us out, putting our, finishing putting our accounting house in order that Carolee has, has been instrumental in cleaning up. We are going to be getting an online automated accounting system, QuickBooks Online. We are looking at a online software solution for event and membership plan, uh, membership management, event management, communications and outreach. Uh, it's a, it probably even we might be able to use it for a website, emails, mailings. It's it's an incredible. We're looking at, at, at resources out there that can do a lot of the drudge work that has it takes a lot of time on our part. It's going to automate a lot of things and make it a lot easier for us to get a hold of people and to manage our resources better. What I'd like to do, and by the time this board has wrapped up, I'd like to have the foundations in place for something that is going to transcend the board when we leave. We're going to have more of a turnkey operation that we can hand over to new people so that things don't have to be reinvented every time a new board comes on. Uh, I think that kind of stability is going to trickle down to the chapters and make your lives a lot easier because you're not going to have to worry from year to year whether you're supposed to send something in or whether we're supposed to send you things in. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that it's also an improvement is I'm talking with a, uh, a, uh, a consultant whose specialty is developing policies and procedures. He's going to be helping me and eventually the board develop a set of policies and procedures that govern the state board and, and the things the chapters do so that you guys don't have to worry about, am I supposed to send this report in? When do I get my money? The, the questions that we hear the most often, you're going to have answers to in, in a document or on the website or on the Yahoo group. So we're at this point now where we're we're getting the ingredients in place to to, we're, to to make things a lot easier for you guys and for us. And I want you to know that we've been doing that because it doesn't get a lot of attention, it doesn't get a lot of publicity, um, and it sometimes may, you might think that the board isn't doing much, but we really are. And likewise, I want to I want to come out of this meeting hearing more about what you guys do, because I know you guys are busy out there in the field, and. The, 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 the challenges of getting a speaker in, the challenges of recruiting your next board. I want it, we need to hear those things so that we can bring resources to bear to help you. So that's really in a nutshell what I'd like the, the, the takeaways to be from, from this meeting. And I hope that uh, after the meeting, when, when you and I all think of the things we forgot to ask or didn't have time to bring up, be in touch. Please, on the board list, by email, Carolee and I, especially, we want to hear your questions, your concerns that we don't get to today. So this is the beginning of an ongoing dialogue that I'm looking forward to having. And that's probably enough spieling at this point. Carolee, would you like to? Sure. I'd also like to start by saying thank you above and beyond what Paul said, which is coming out here on a Sunday on your free time, and for all of you um, who helped plan it, Janet and Louise especially, um, for all that you guys are doing at the chapter levels. The chapter program is pretty new, and as a matter of fact, Paul, you're the first 
Baltimore was our first chapter. What yes, not even about five, less than five years ago. And to think that you guys are all part of this legacy that's only five years old, how amazing that is, and how much work that is for all of you, too. Um, what Paul said is what we've all been talking about as a board um, over the, what has it been now, six months, which is that we need more open lines of communication. We'd also like you guys to know what we look like. <clears throat> there are very few events, such as a conference, and not everyone comes to that. So to be able to know who you're actually talking to in the email. But we do <clears throat> need a lot of feedback. We need to know what's going on. Sometimes we hear about problems when they're so far along that we're five steps past where things would have been an easy solution. Um, and there's all kinds of difficulties with an organization that's statewide, uh, with all of Maryland um, being covered. And you know, we have two areas with new um, chapters hopefully starting up. And Montgomery chapter just started this year. Did you and Alice get to talk? Good. Um, so I had, anyway, all of us are pretty new um, for chapters. Um, I have been covering Treasury for the year, and I know um, that before that there wasn't really a treasurer, so I'm sure that has caused some difficulties for those of you who served before the new board took over. <coughs> so I'd love to hear about questions or concerns about um, anything Treasury related, um, especially what we need to know is, is the stipend working. Um, you mm -hmm. have reports you submit to me every six months. Um, how's that going? Is that working okay? Um, we know that you give up your writing time to do NWA things, mm -hmm. so we want to make it as easy and simple for you. And we just need to have that figure out there so we know, you know, how are you doing with your spending? Do you need anything from us? And what kind of speakers you're bringing and that sort of thing. Um, and then I guess we're going to turn it over to John now. You ready? Very good. <coughs> okay. Um, so, uh, John Dantico and I do the uh, long range planning. I've had this position since June. Um, so, let me tell you how this, this program of sponsorship sort of came about. Um, when I first joined the organization and became a board member, um, we were preparing for the conference. And people, uh, folks, talked about sponsorships. Or this person wants to sponsor us, this person wants to give us $250, this person wants to do this. But to me, there was no organized process that tied everything together. So I said to Paul on the board, I said, look, let me go off and work on this problem. Let me go off and see if we can put some sort of process in the place that becomes sort of a standardized, you know, wheel churning kind of a, a process with the express, you know, intent to raise funds for the state as well as the chapter so we could do more things and branch out and try other things. I mean, that's the bottom line here. So um, I worked on that for uh, several months. We passed uh, uh, different ideas back and forth. Um, and we have reached a point now, and I, again, I apologize, I've been out of the loop for personal issues for the last six weeks. Um, but other than that, <clears throat> um, I, we've now reached a point where I have uh, brought with me um, one of the things I realized that after Paul sent me, a, I think, a um, something that his wife had gotten at a conference about sponsorships for the organization that she belongs to, and it was a, I thought you know I, mean, I need to I had just developed what I would call uh, sort of the brochure perspective. Okay, so this is a this is a mock-up if you will, of the brochure, and it's not printed on the paper, it would be printed on, you know, it'd be more of a glossy, snappy look of the thing, but, you know, this is just, you know, just something for you to see. So what I did was we, I went off and I, and I created, this is called the Sponsorship Goals and Guidelines document that goes along with the brochure in an explanation of the process of how we can get sponsorships and, and the role that I would play. And one of the questions we had to answer. It was one of these things, you know, kind of spun around. We got settled a couple of months ago on a board, at least, and when I say settled, I mean at least we have something on paper. It hasn't been voted on. It hasn't been approved by the board. This is a, this is the last stage before that would happen, right? I think that that is correct. Yes. Right. So, but we wanted, you know, I thought this was an optimum <clears throat> opportunity to give you a chance. Alex has been part of that as a, as a as a president of Montgomery Chapter, she's been calling and dialing in when we, we have the uh, phone calls. So I thought what I would do is give this to you, take a look at it, 
any feedback, any changes. There's some corrections I think Louise wanted. We made those, and there's some other things that probably still have to be, you know, meted out. But one of the things that I was very concerned about was, you know, you walk in, and there's a, let's say, a rare books or an old books store, and you want this person to become a sponsor. What do we offer that person? What do we offer them in trade? And, right, what do we do for them? Okay. You give us X amount of dollars, yeah, you support our writing efforts and, and our organizational efforts, but we want to do something more for you. So the brochure is based on that perspective, okay? There are four different levels of, of sponsorship, and, and we decided, I decided, you know, to ask for substantial funds of money. So, for example, we have a platinum at 1250 a gold at 750 a silver at 350 and then we also have a part here for in-kind contributions, <coughs> like, like, like Sunrise Senior Living gives um, a Howard County the space to hold meetings. Well, they should get some sort of notoriety out of that. They should get something for that. So they would, um, um, so that we call it an in-kind contribution. Okay. These are more of the guidelines. These are four pages. I'm sorry. To go along with this explains it. And then we came up. The big issue. Let me. I digress a little bit here. The big issue we wanted to get in, uh, that I wanted to get my arms around, is suppose a sponsorship is initiated at the state, at the at the chapter level. Okay. Someone knows a book dealer in Carroll County, or somebody knows a book dealer in St. Charles County, and in Charles County, excuse me. And uh, what happens if you initiate that at the chapter level rather than I, as a state board person, you know? selling it out of the back of my car, so to speak. Um, what do we do for you? And at the point we've arrived at right now, I'm not saying this is the final, again, this hasn't been voted on, is a 60-40 split. So in other words, 60% of the money would actually go to the state for the conference and this other uh, things like the teen writing program that we're, we're, we're getting a little bit more horsepower behind, and 40% of the money would go to the chapters. Okay, So that's we thought that was a pretty fair split. And that there's a, a there's a incentive there for the for the chapters to become involved in helping us identify uh, and then garner sponsorships from different folks. More than that, I, uh, it's a process. It, it it doesn't matter who's the chapter president, or or if I'm here in two or three years, it doesn't matter. It's a process that goes on. It's established. We work. It certainly can be refined. But it's something that I think uh, makes it easier for people to conceptualize how we get sponsorships and how we get funds into the organization. So, um, so that's it in terms of uh, in terms of the sponsorship. We're looking to work on the final and get all the documents out. What I said I would do uh, is simply is is that I would personally. Uh, when we get everything finalized, we get them printed up. I would go to each chapter personally uh, for one of the meetings and explain the entire sponsorship programs and give some of the information out so that you know to the chapter president so you could hang on to that stuff and pass them out as you need, you need to. Fair enough. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, does the color choices and the graphics and stuff? I'm just wondering if it reflects the long-awaited new website. That is a heck of a good question. And the answer is, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just did this. I have a Mac and I use Pages, uh, which is a great little, uh, uh, call it a word processing, highly graphical program. Paul has a sense of it. And so I use that in one of the, one of the uh, templates and then I just kind of put ideas together. Does it have to be these colors? No, I can change any color you want. Uh, I can do whatever you want with this thing. But, it, you know, it was... To me, a lot of times, having developed my own website and having done that in the past, there's a, there's an adage in website development. After a while, put it on the net. You know, get it on, get it up there, and then you can see what it looks like, and you can start to make corrections. So a lot of times, I'll build a website to 75 percent, and then the rest of the, you know, you, you make modifications. This was to get something on paper. We needed to get something down and on paper so that we could all focus on it and then make the, the dutiful changes. As as uh, as need be. I don't know what the website coloration is about, but certainly that can be done like that. Well, the person working on the website is not here, so the, Paul, do you know anything about how far along we are? Or I mean, 
The chest. Do you have something okay. to say about those? Please. You. No, I, you probably don't want to. No, know. I know. I know nothing about how far the website is going, but I have no, uh, no sense that it will be ready in my lifetime. <laughs> but, <laughs> that being said. No, but but I want to say that I signed the uh, membership brochure, and uh, I put it in the colors of of, of the uh, Maryland flag, black, red, yellow. Uh, because and white, uh, because I was told that those were the colors on the new website. They are. And so, actually, you're, uh, Regina, you're right that this ought to reflect those colors if, if it continues to be red, yellow, and black. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. and whatever. So is this a new? <laughs> yeah. so, we had we had so made a, uh, we had a blue banner made. I love the so the, like the pen and you know, the little pen. And this was the new logo. logo. See, this was the, the new logo, logo that was sent to the blue logo. No, it's, so, that was the traditional one. Oh, the the only thing that's changed was the original was black. This yellow I actually created. A few years ago, the board ordered a blue white on blue banner, and this is taken from that. Oh, okay. To answer, to answer the question about the website, I, I, guess, I would like to talk a little bit about the website, and the situation is pretty simple. What the website lacks right now is a champion. It lacks someone who's willing to take this grab by the horns and see it through to the end. It's a long, it's a complicated, it's a pain in the butt process that's been dragging on for years. It's well into its third administration. Right now, we've had three presidents who've seen Charlie, this website. It's getting old. It's always this close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all good. We're all good. Yeah. Okay. The other thing about the website that's really uh, important, that another reason that it's, it's, there's a problem is that the process has taken so long that a significant amount of the content is now obsolete. So someone's going to have to go through and clean it up. And by the time that gets cleaned up, the other half will be obsolete. What this website desperately, desperately needs is someone who's willing to man up, step up to the plate, and run this thing. And I would love to have a volunteer. Um, if somebody is willing to take this bull by the horns and just about any other cliche you can think of, uh, I would love to see it through. Part of the problem is we, um, the website was designed on a platform that nobody really wants to use. It's, it was designed on, um, what is it, Drupal? Joomla. Joomla, right. Which, if it was Drupal, at least I could find somebody who you knew how to use the damn thing. Joomla is basically designed for international, multinational conglomerate superpowers. <laughs> wow. So it's sort of like hiring a bulldozer to, uh, you know, do something that bulldozers don't do. I Would suck you at metaphors. Official to get another website designer and just start from scratch? That's the plan. That's like that's my place. secret agenda, and I can say that. Turn those cameras off. Turn them off now. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would really love to see us just completely scrap the, the site and start with something fresh. And I actually Carl Rauscher, who is our webmaster now, uh, who's doing a, who's doing a really good job of keeping the old site alive. Uh, basically, I I cornered Carl once and, and asked him, look. If the two of us had to pull an all-nighter with pizza and beer and just completely redesign the site from scratch, would you be willing to do it? And he said, yeah. So the problem is I just don't have the time to pull an all-nighter with Carl to do it. So one of the um, one of the things we're looking at right now, Carolee and I um, recently sat in on a training session. And Carolee, maybe you want to talk a little bit more about this. But we sat in on a training session for a system called Star Chapter which is a beautiful software-as-a-service function that provides event and membership management, communications, uh, website design. Web and website design. Basically, it, it creates, they, they have templates, they will work with us to port over our content and integrate it with our mailing lists and our newsletters and everything else Carolee can talk a little bit more about the details. The price, we haven't approached the board with this yet as a pitch because we're still scouting other software solutions that do similar things. But Star Chapter right now, I think it's safe to say, is our favorite. But the advantage with Star Chapter is that it does have this website built in. And my feeling right now is I'd like to wait till we get that solution in place and have that be our website solution. But, like I said, this hasn't been brought to the board yet for any, in any kind of formal way. This is the first time 95% of you are hearing about this. So, 
I'd love to see this website solution solved, and there's only there's only three ways it's going to get solved. One, somebody somebody solves this problem, somebody becomes a champion of the new quote unquote new site and hauls this thing out of the garage and gets it running. <coughs> Two, somebody's willing to pull an all-nighter and, and port this thing over into WordPress and do it for free. Or three, we go with one of these software software as a solution, software as a service uh, services like like Star Chapter. So that's where the website is right now. I'm totally not happy with it, but we are trying in our own. We're trying to make progress in a new direction because the other ways have not gotten anywhere. So that's the harsh answer, and I hope that helps. So Paul, I mean, several times I've volunteered to port it over to WordPress. I said I, I, I'm not. Who'd you volunteer to? I, I said that in the beginning when I heard about Joomla. I said if you if you do it in WordPress, I'll help. But otherwise. Congratulations, you're now the website point person. <laughs> and you got a roof full of witnesses this time. No, seriously, you know, if, if you're willing, I, I, I'm kind of kidding. If you're if you're serious, let's yeah. talk. But the uh, now that we have this, now that we have Star Chapter or whatever other system we end up going with, if we if we decide to go with one, I think that may be a viable option as well. And then you could be the point person to work with them to get the content ported over and cleaned up. It'd actually be even easier because you just do content and send it to them. So, at least with Star Chapter. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, not, they're not free though, right? They're not free, but they're a lot less than what we're paying for, for Cvent right now. The reason we're looking at them is we started uh, we started out by looking for a substitute for Cvent, which is the event management software that we use. Cvent is $4,000... A year if you sign for two years. Yeah. Which we did sign for two years. And for what we use it for, it is absurdly overpriced. We use it for the conference and the contests, and that's it, right? I mean, yeah, we had it for the conference. And it's a pain to use, right? And they charge you for training. Yeah. And they charge for Not training. It, it wasn't that bad for the administrator. It was bad for everybody that was trying to get on it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because as the ministry, I didn't really have a tr problems with it, but everybody was complaining, like the money didn't go through, and then the, or they didn't have the right links to their their um, contest entries, and I was just yeah. like, okay, whatever. Definitely <laughs> Eventbrite, I think Eventbrite. Is a Eventbrite is another one that we've been looking into. Uh, Eventbrite is primarily focused on on just event management. So we had it recommended to us by an org. I've been doing a lot of work that I don't tell you guys about because, frankly, I'm afraid that if you ever find out, no. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I was talking with an organization that provides uh, administrative support services to nonprofits to see if we would be a viable candidate to have people come in and run the organization administratively for us to let us go and do more writer board type things. And they basically they said they can't touch us because we're just not big enough and we're not really worth their time, but. Organizations like us that are too small for a professional organization can benefit from something like uh, Star Chapter, and there were two or three others whose names I'm blanking on. They are the advantage with them is they do a lot more, but they do it for a lot less than CVent. Uh, I believe the setup fee is $800, and then it's um, a regular flat monthly fee. Trainings are free. Uh, the the website development is free. Iterations are free. I mean, this is all. There's a lot of free work, and they come highly recommended. I've, I've been I've been looking into their references, and a lot of good associations use them. So at first we were just looking for a Cvent replacement, and then we found out we might be able to do these other things that could eventually lead to a new website. Because Star Chapter. Really? Star Chapter. And it's Star Chapter. Dot com. Exactly, and it is one. Word. I um I don't know if you've heard of Member Clicks. Yes, yeah, that's another one we looked okay. at. Okay. I like, there was a lot about member clicks, clicks that I liked, except one of the things that it fundamentally lacked was it didn't have any kind of outreach capability. It doesn't, uh, basically Star Chapter's biggest selling point for me was that it'll, it, it, it integrates communications, uh, emails, mass mailings, newsletter mailings. Uh, member clicks, they create their own version of Facebook. It's an isolated little island community of social media, and that's, I would rather us be using like our stuff that we already have. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to duplicate the Yahoo groups and everything. So, but, but other than that, I really like them, and they're still in the running. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really a long-winded answer to your question, but... Mm -hmm. yeah.
Um, well, you mentioned the Yahoo groups, and I've been hearing some rumors that Yahoo groups in general may be going by. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm, you know, Yahoo may be going away. Yeah. If that happens, I'm really hoping that Yahoo will facilitate some kind of transition. The most likely would be Google Groups. Oh, by the way, I've set up large Google Groups, and it's not hard at all. No, you Google Groups. Wait. It yeah. takes about two weeks at least for them to approve because they're afraid you're going to be spamming people. So they literally check every single address. It okay. takes two or three weeks. That's Just good. Give them a huge email list, and they'll they'll scour it. They'll scour it. And okay. Yeah. We had originally wanted to go with Google Groups, but uh, I, I was informed that Google was evil and therefore we were not allowed to <laughs> use it. <laughs> Such is the nature of things. But yeah, I. That it, was it, then, this is now. That was then. Right. <laughs> now everybody's. And this morality is so malleable. I, yes, yes. That might just be our board motto. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have volunteered to do something. <laughs> not sure exactly what, but um, I get the I have the feeling that um, all the all these tech changes have lots of implications for what I'm I would be doing. Um, so so yeah I, I uh, well what what do you think? Well, about first that? of all, what is it that you volunteered for? <laughs> I can I can tell you if you don't. What what we were looking for was. Something that I think we really need, which is a, a single repository for policies, procedures, documents of interest that board board people and state chapter people can go to when they need to find out: Should I be reporting this? How can I get help for this? Who should I talk to about this? Basically, a giant as a first step, a giant repository would be a really nice thing because then we'd have we know the universe of the information that we have and the information that we don't have that we need. So I think it's still a valuable thing for us to do. Whatever system we end up with, it'll it will that then we'll be able to have all that information in one place that we can then move it over in the new one. So I don't. I would recommend not necessarily waiting on the new systems because That's my question. Yeah, really. we're still going to need that information in the interim, mm -hmm. and there's no telling how long this new system. I mean, I have to. We have to choose a system. We have to figure out pricing. We have to. We have to romance this with the board to get their bot. Everybody's buy-in. We have to. We have to figure out if what kind of trainings we can arrange for the chapters. There's a lot of work ahead, but it shouldn't slow us down doing the other thing. And if it's so, faster um, than it's been on the website, I'm all for it. <laughs> I can guarantee you, it will be faster than the website because nothing, for the simple reason that nothing could possibly be slower. So, <laughs> so well. I guess the only thing is I, I have to make sure that this um, information is collected uh, using a platform or a program or what have you. Where importing it into this hypothetical platform is not going to, you know, take uh, weeks and weeks no. of typing or something. It, it's not. Basically, they're going to do a straight uh, port of the current content into. A, a website that essentially will mirror the structure of our own, and then from that point, we will update gradually and iterate the content until it's up to up to par. They're not going to do any editing; they're just going to do the technical. Okay. When I um, worked at a law firm, uh, when I got there, they they had a catalog uh, called I believe uh, TLC. It it uh, I. I got I got the feeling that it was a, a company of uh, two or three people, <laughs> and um, I mean they offered training I think for a price and but any, anyway it uh, it didn't work with anything else and it well actually it was I think it was based it might have been uh, based on something but any, anyway it, it it went went away so it, there was no more support sure so. Uh, so I end up making a new catalog, you know, thousands of entries um, in Microsoft Access, You're just customizing myself. But I, I never, I never figured out a way. Maybe there was a way to 
just import everything, but I ended up typing the entire catalog. <laughs> it took uh, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. That's being generous. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's, um, not to mention the tea. Yeah, that's, that's uh, right. where my concern comes from. Yeah, th this is something that we would not have to... W what we're going to need coming out of this is a, is a dedicated webmaster mm -hmm. who's going to work on keeping the content up. I, in, I, before I did anything else, the, my first board job that I ever did was the webmaster. I did that for about two and a half years. And you, keeping that website up to date is, is easily three hours, three, four, five hours a week. And I do mean a week this time. <laughs> yes. It, there's a lot of content on there. So we need someone who's willing to do that. And Carl, to be fair, is it, Jumal was such a pain to learn that he didn't, you know, it, it wasn't really worth his time, and I completely understand that, to learn Joomla just to keep that site updated. But he can, he's certainly cap capable and willing to keep the current site up as long as people let him know what needs to be updated. So the site is only as current as the information we can get Carl. He's very fast about getting updates out there. So, to, so in other words, it's a really long slogging process. And I just want to say for the record, because I'm afraid that Allie will be watching this and by now she will be mad at me, Allie deserves a lot of credit for getting, for having done as much as she humanly possibly could to get this process working as well. I mean, Allie deserves a lot of credit for having originated it, shepherded it through as far as she could. Um, she got it to the point where it needed to be handed over and there really was no one to hand it over to. So I'm not, I just want to make sure that it's, that the record is clear that Ali is not, I, I would, what I said earlier was not meant to imply that she didn't, she dropped the ball or didn't do anything. So Ali, if you're, if you're watching this, we'll love your lady. So that's enough on the website. Uh, is there any other questions for any of the chapter, any of the board, state board members?